In this tutorial, we will create a localized app and compare the differences between the original localization and the new localization in Swift UI strings catalog. The tutorial will begin by implementing the original localization and in a later tutorial we will implement the same app using the strings catalog. So this is the application and the functionality that, we'll, that we will create. It will allow the user to change the language of the application by clicking on the change language button. As you can see at the moment, this is all in English. Clicking on the change language button and then I can set the language to Spanish. And as you can see, the language changed to Spanish. Or I can set the language to French, and then it changes to French. And it also persists the um, selection. So each time when you launch the app, it will load the correct language that should be displayed on the application. The first thing we need to do is add our strings file. Because we're using three different languages, we need to create three string files. And this will include French, English, and Spanish. So to do that, just right click within your project, select new file. Within the filter, type in strings. And select strings file legacy. As I said earlier, in a later tutorial, we will convert the actual application to use the new strings catalog. But in this tutorial, we're using the legacy one to, just to show you the comparisons. This is the string file for France, for French, I mean. So just type in fr.lprog. And then it creates a file, there, your strings file. And then we just apply our text, which is here. This is the text that will be converted to French. As you can see, it has a welcome message, and the welcome message is in French, and it has a footer text that will be, dis be displayed, and an application title, and a navigation bar text, and language selection title, and the captions for choose language and change language for the button. Now we need to repeat the same process for English. So right click, hold down the control key. I mean left click and hold down the control key and then select new file. Within filter type strings and select the legacy file, which is the middle one. And then just type in the following, eng.lproj. And then I'll just copy the text. For the English conversion. And then the final one we need to do is Spanish. Hold down the control key and left click on your mouse. Type in strings. Click on next. 
and then type in es docs l p r o j then we just get the text for spanish The next thing we need to do is to create a new class called Language Manager. Select Swift File, click on Next, Language Manager. Add the following to the Language Manager class. Class Language Manager Observable Object to observe and detect any changes. Static let shared equals Language Manager. And that will create a shared instance of the language manager class. At publish var selected language equals en. So the selected language by default will be English. Function, I mean func, set language language code string The purpose of this function is to enable the app to set the language that's been specified by the user. If bundle dot main dot localization dot contains language code. So what we're doing there, we'll check if the provided language code is supported by the application. So if it's true, then try to set the language by using user defaults. User, user defaults dot standard dot set. language code for key my language or my languages And this will set the language to use the defaults so that the language is always persisted when the application is opened and closed. Selected language equals language code. Next thing we need to do is to define the language codes that are supported. Okay. 
far supported languages string so this will return a string of languages that are supported return en es fr And this line is also called a computed property. The next function we need to create is called language display name. For language code string that returns a string for the display name. So what this does, it just looks for the language codes and for each of the, of the language codes, like if it's EN, then it will just return English as the display name for that language. Paste ES return Spanish Case FR return French report return blank. I've forgotten the colons that needs to be at the end of the case. I'll just compile it. The next thing we need to do is to add another file or another yeah, another file called extensions for strings. So this will be strings plus extensions. Select Swift file. Name the file strings plus extensions. And then type in extension string. And then we'll be extending our string by adding our own localized function. Function, I mean func localized. Localize using language code string that returns a string. And then the next thing we need to do is to attempt to find the localized file path for the given language code. 
bundle.main.path for resources language code LP ROJ which are these string files LP ROJ let bundle equals bundle path path else line 15 what that does it creates a bundle from the found path and then accesses the localized content Return NS localize string self comma comma on line seventeen if no specific localization is found then it defaults to the main localization. And then on lines 18 or after lines 18, we just type the following return ns localize string self table name is nil. Bundle, bundle, value, comment, it's blank. So if it reaches line 20, it will return the localized string using the specific bundle of that language code. I'll just compile it. In next week's lesson, we will add our language selection view that enables the user to select their language that they want to be assigned to their application. Thank you for joining us. If you found this tutorial helpful, please comment, like and subscribe. See you next week.